Welcome to this video and happy new year. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing information around the number one intention that people set every single year. And that has to do around their weight, their body, and their intention for health in general. And I'm gonna explain the bulletproof or a bulletproof approach, a strategy that you can use to ensure that you have this thing under lock once and for all. So you don't have to keep setting these goals year in, year out. Now, I'm also gonna explain why you may have been struggling with this intention for years and years and years and how to be rid and over it once and for all. The beauty about this video is although I'm gonna be talking about weight management or body goals, the principles can be extrapolated into any area of life. So I hope that you use these points and look at them from a, a principle standpoint and not just specific tips about your weight because it's really more about the principle. Now, of course, we already know that, you know, there are certain things that you still need to do. You know, you need to eat healthy and you need to work out to get the body or the state that you wish to be in. People already know that. That is why people sign up at the gym every year like clockwork and then they quit 30 days later. So the fact is that there is something else that needs to be done and that is what we must understand. That is what you must understand and that is what I wanna share with you. And in order to do that, I wanna share this image with you. So if you haven't seen any of my videos, you should, this should help, okay? So this is what we call a stick figure, okay? This is what we call the theory of mind showing you how exactly mind works because this game if we keep signing up at the gym and we keep setting the intention to do things over and over year in year out and we don't win there's obviously a different reason and i posit that that reason is actually your mind it's not what you do it's not signing up at the gym and this will help you understand what is going on and so a new year comes around and you set a new goal this is new body okay this is new bod and you set that new intention for the new body. You go to the gym for three weeks and then you quit. And then we wonder what happens. Here is what happened. What happened is really because the fact that your conscious mind is only about 12% of your mind. Your conscious mind uses one of his intellectual faculties of willpower. That is the one that gets you plugging through and saying, I'm gonna do it this time. So you use your willpower. However, willpower has a very short shelf life. And so this is what's been happening the whole time is that your subconscious, there is a self image that resides in your subconscious mind. This is an image of who you are, who you believe you are. And let us say this new bod image was, let us say you're female, you wanted to get, let's say a 140 pound body, no judgment as far as the number is concerned, it's just arbitrary. Let's say you were 220 before, so here's what's happening though. You have a self image that supports 220 pounds. That's obviously why you are that weight. And the subconscious mind happens to conservatively be about 88% of your mind. Literally, if this was an election, which it is, who wins? The subconscious concept, the fixed idea, the known in the subconscious mind wins every day and every night. The body being a servant of the mind only does what the subconscious, because the subconscious has the most votes, only does what the subconscious mind wants, okay? And that is why you wonder why it gets really hard for you to get up after three weeks and go do that thing. That's because you've reverted back to the known in the subconscious. And that's another thing, subconscious works on the basis of knowns. This is what we've always known. And it also works off of homeostasis. Okay, and this is its desire to keep things as they've always been. Its desire to maintain the status quo, its desire to maintain balance. Water always seeks its own level. So when all is said and done, it goes back to where we've always been. So to really, to help you understand first why that happens is that you have an image that sustains and supports the current weight. This is why we go back to the new year and we try again, okay? Now I'm gonna use another imagery to explain how exactly that happens with homeostasis. 
give you an example because this will be familiar to some people who try the yo-yo diets and they try all sorts of stuff and they always seem to just keep coming back to the same way. All right, let us use this scale here. Um, let us say the, the new weight, the new intended weight is 140. The current weight is 220. Yep. And this is uh, 300 right here. This is 250. And this is, let's call that uh, 200. Okay. So this is what happens. This is where you are. Okay. This is where you live. This is where you reside. This is, this is home for now. In everybody's mind, there is a safety net area where you can gain and you can lose a certain amount of weight, okay? And this is because of the mind's desire to maintain balance. It'll give you a little bit of grace. So let us say 25 pounds. If, let's call her Sheila, gains 25 pounds, she begins what we call scrambling behavior. This intention to re-establish order. And so the mind, she's going to look in the mirror and say, oh, hell no, there's no way I'm this way. I'm going to do something. I'm going to start dieting or fasting or do a cleanse. And then she's going to start creeping right back down to, let's say, she goes down to 210 or 220 and then becomes comfortable again. And as soon as she's 210, 220, that cycle continues again. But always, usually, you'll find that the individual gravitates around that weight that weight that is being held in the subconscious mind. The same thing applies if she were to lose too much weight, somehow on a subconscious level, the individual will begin doing things to help them gain that weight. They may even get in an argument and if they eat out of frustration or anxiety, they start to eat to gain weight. They may not know that's what they're doing, but that is exactly what is going on. This applies to men, this applies to women. You know, a guy, say for instance, myself, I can look in the mirror, I'm like, man, I'm getting skinny. I need to put up some muscle, I need to do something. And that is because there is a set point that I have, that every individual has, consciously or subconsciously, about what they are comfortable with. So in order to move past where you've been, in order to make such a drastic change as this, the individual needs to re-establish a new subconscious set point, a new self-image as to what is acceptable on a subconscious level. This number needs to change. That number needs to change to match what is in a conscious mind. Okay? When this and this matches, the body will always express what is here. It doesn't really care what is here. What is here is only there to impress into the subconscious. That's how you impress into the subconscious, by new input, okay? But the body will always do what the subconscious mind supports. So the first step there is understanding what's going on and then changing your self-image, okay? Now, the number one reason is people keep that weight because they have a self image that supports that weight. They fail to maintain the new desire because they do not have a subconscious image that supports the new desire, right? Now, I'm gonna backtrack here just one step to give you some practical step-by-step -step ways and things to do. Number one, you must have a clear image of what it is that you seek and what it is that you desire. A lot of people who say, oh, I just want to lose weight. I want to get in shape. I want to go to the gym or whatever, right? And then they find that they quit. The question is why? Well, number one is that there was no clarity. What exactly does lose weight mean? What does get in shape mean? Those are all vague wishes. And so you must bring that vagueness into the land of clarity. I want to lose 20 pounds, okay? And I want to lose it by March, for instance. Or I just want to lose 20 pounds and stay 20 pounds lighter. That's actually better than just saying, oh, I just want to lose 20 pounds by March. I want to lose 20 pounds by March and I want to stay at that weight. Now, 
You want to stay at that weight because that's not just what you want to do temporarily, but because now you're a person who's 20 pounds lighter and who will stay 20 pounds lighter. It's the reason why when women lose weight to fit in a wedding dress, they come back from the wedding and they get right back to where they were because they never had an image to be there permanently. They just wanted to fit into the dress. So you must have a clear image. You must gain clarity. That goal, that intention must be, and you guys have heard this before, it must be specific, okay? 20 pounds by what date, okay? It doesn't have to be weight. It could be, um, I wanna have a six pack. It could be, I wanna gain, you know, one inch on my arms, or I wanna lose one inch on my arms. Whatever it is, it just needs to be specific. It could be, I wanna be able to play with my grandkids, or I wanna go up the stairs at work without having to feel like I'm gonna die, right? The stairs are pretty much a specific thing. You'll know what's going on there. Along with being specific, you wanna add an image to it. What does it look like when I, I'm able to play with my kids or my grandkids and not feel like I'm gonna pass out. What does that look like? See, there's an image that comes to mind. It's an image of stamina, there's an image of virility, whatever the image is. But what does it look like when I fit into that dress that I've always had in the closet and I've always stared at but haven't been able to fit in? What does that look like? Okay, so you wanna tie that with an image. So specificity and then an image to support that. The left and right brain area is working. The left brain works on the specific. The right brain works with the picture, okay? So when those two areas are engaged, now you have more of congruence between both areas of the mind. And it increases the likelihood that your subconscious image will hold that new image because you can see it from both hemispheres of the brain. Hemispheres was the word I was looking for, okay? So specific, and an image. Another reason people fail is they don't have enough desire. Okay, not enough desire. Why do I wanna lose 20 pounds? I wanna lose 20 pounds just because. Well, that's not good enough. It is the reason why people who need to lose 20 pounds or 40 or 60 pounds because your doctor said, I'm gonna die, do that sooner than Becky who wants to lose 10 pounds to fit in a wedding dress because she doesn't really have that much desire or incentive relative to the person who is really going to die, okay? So you want to find out what is it that I want to reach this goal for? Why do I want to lose that weight for? You must find a desire that is strong enough to support that. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the way you look. It could be the way you feel. It could be your confidence about yourself. It could be your health. It could be your cholesterol levels dropping, and that's another measurable metric, right? Your cholesterol levels or Whatever the case is, why do you want to look better? Why do you want to feel better? That must be tied into it. See, specific image, right brain? And then you also employ that reason, that why. That again engages the right brain, which is your subconscious mind, really. So you want to know why. Why that is, why you want what you want. Now. And after that, the next thing and the next way, because everything is gonna come down to how to impress the subconscious mind. You want to address states of being. The question is, I'm gonna put here in case you're looking at it later. Now the question is being. What am I being? I, spe I spelled that wrong, didn't I? What am I being? What do I need to be? What do I need to be? I'll just leave it a B. Um, B I N G. I don't know what's going on there. Um, what do I need to be to reach this weight management goal? Here are some examples. Who do I need to become? Do I need to be a person who can keep their word? You see, reaching an objective like weight management requires you keeping your word to yourself. It requires you saying, okay, I'm not gonna eat that. It requires you saying, okay, I am gonna commit to three, four days of whatever physical exercise or routine or regimen, right? Or I'm not gonna add sugar to my coffee, I'm not gonna do this. What are you being? Are you being a person who keeps your word to yourself? That is more powerful. Being. Am I being a person that has self-control or do I have to be that person? What do I need to be 
to reach this new ideal, to reach this new goal that I have set for myself. States of being. Stuff is bothering me. <laughs> what do I need to be? Okay. And now the next thing along with the being are labels. What labels am I or have I been giving myself that do not support this new ideal? Do I call myself a fat boy? Do I call myself a fat girl? Do I call myself fat ass or whatever it is? Do I say, oh man, I love cake or I love cookies. Oh man, you know, those labels affect you because they're also still part of defining your self image. Okay. If you say, I really want to get in shape, but man, I'm a fat boy. You know, I got to have my dessert that changes the way you respond to dessert. So along with being, you have to address labels. What do you catch yourself saying about yourself, right? Do you catch yourself saying, well, quote unquote, pardon my language, my fat ass will never lose this weight. I've tried to lose this weight for the last 20 years. What you must understand is that you are actually reprogramming yourself not to lose the weight and reinforcing the fact that you haven't lost the weight. So what labels and what are you saying to yourself? Because your subconscious mind is always, always listening. Now, um, and the other thing too is Emerson said, of what use are heroic vows of amendment if the same lawbreaker is to keep them? You keep saying, oh, I want to lose weight, but you keep supporting a different ideal in your, in your mind. I want to lose weight. You know, I had somebody here the other day. You probably know who, who, who you probably know I'm talking about you if you watch this video, but it's all in love, right? Because I, I did call you out on it. The individual said, well, man, I could, I feel like driving 30 miles to go get these cookies. And I'm like, what? Oh, you know, oh, I just want cookies right now. I'm like, and you're going to drive 30 miles to go get cookies, considering you're supposed to be on a diet, right? You're supposed to be on a weight loss program, an intense weight loss program. And you're literally wanting to drive 30 miles to go get cookies. She was like, but I love them. You know, oh, man, you know, I, I can already imagine the smell. I was like, great way to help yourself. Right? So, you must know what things are you falling for? What labels, what things are you telling your mind? Because your mind will always try to do that. Don't want one thing and then reinforce it with the entire opposite. Now, these things are certainly things that if put in practice will help you. And then finally, we come down to habit. Okay. After you have got gained clarity, after you've gained clarity on what it is that you want, you have enough reasons why, okay? You have also begun to check your labels because these are part of your subconscious programs and also now determine what you must be. I must be this person of integrity. I must keep my word to myself. I must have self-control. I must be committed. I must be persistent. You check your labels and you reframe your labels. I'm no longer that person. Okay. And now it comes down to habit. These are the daily actions that you take. And the questions are what actions will you have to take to reach, maintain that state of being. Okay. Cause when you are something, you don't really need to change it anymore. Next year, you won't necessarily need to change it unless you're trying to get better. Okay. People who keep going back to their old weight or to their former states are the ones who never fully integrated that ideal into their being. Okay. Now, the first thing about goals that you want to realize is especially with the body, especially with weight, people tend to fall into the trap of just trying to track their weight and step on the scale. But here's the thing. I want to tell you to avoid that as much as you can and just be focused on the activity. Wow, I can't spell today. Be focused on the activity. Okay. Don't worry about this, that, and the other. After you've set your goal, you've chosen your intention, just focus on the activity. Tell yourself and decide what activities you need to 
participate in. All right, I need to go to the gym three days a week. I need to walk, you know, 10 miles a week, whatever the case is. Stick to the activity. Don't use the goal as your check in. Check in, track your activity, don't track the goal. Okay? Now, because when you perform the action, the results will be practically inevitable. Along with that, here are some, these are just habit tips. You wanna pair that activity with something else that you already do. It's called piggybacking, okay? So if you know when you get back home, you don't like going out, you don't wanna to go to the gym, take your gym clothes, drive from work, and go to the gym before you even come back home, okay? If you know that once you're settled in, you're not gonna to wanna to go walk, Put your walking shoes right in front of your garage door, whatever the case is. So when you get home, you put your shoes on and you're walking back out before you come back, right? So you wanna to try to pair these activities with things that, will, that you already do anyways. Things that already take little to no willpower, okay? And now track those activities. Set your goal and say, okay, I'm gonna go walk 30 days or I'm gonna to go to the gym three times a week, every other day for 60 days. I'm not gonna miss that routine. You're tracking the activity and you're checking it off as you go. Don't worry about the weight, okay? Now the next thing and the final thing here, because I'm not gonna go much longer in this, is when you set goals, do not overdo it. One of the big things, especially with the body that I see a lot of people do, is they, they, they overcompensate. They're over exuberant. And then because of that, they wear themselves out and they're out of the game. Consistency with light effort is significantly better than gigantic effort that is gonna quit seven days later, is gonna quit 30 days later because you're exhausted. So pace yourself, okay, while beginning this new habit. Pace yourself because if it is indeed who you are to be. This is a long-term mission, right? So get in it, take it easy. If you need to go to the gym once every two days, that's cool, but just take it easy. You can go every day, but only for like 20 minutes. I don't care. Something that's not gonna wear you out, something that's not gonna exhaust you, and then you can slowly ease into it and pace yourself. And that applies with any other activity. If you wanted to work out at home, you know, do 20 sit-ups. And then next week do 25 and work into it. And these will slowly help you adjust into the new self-image and maintain your ideal weight. So these are things that I personally use and incorporate in my life. These are tips that I also use and share with my clients as far as how to have maintain the ideal body such that you don't have to do it again next year. So I hope you found value in this video. Obviously, this could be an entire course in of itself, but um, I really do hope that these ideas, especially understanding how the conscious mind works, the decision you've made, the subconscious works, that image, that self-image, that belief, that understanding, that conviction of who you are in relation to the body, okay? Knowing that it must be a change of who you are and your being, as opposed to what you want or what you desire to accomplish. So no matter what, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Cheers.